Hello Jurassic Park fans and fellow toy collectors, Prince Charmander here and today uh, I'm here to do an unboxing of not one but two figures. We did uh, an unboxing of the Hammond Collection Ian Malcolm and Velociraptor last video and the video prior to that we took a look at the Tyrannosaurus Rex and now we're going to be going ahead and seeing two of the medium sized figures. So uh, we have the small figures which is like the humans, the, the more human sized uh, dinosaurs and we have the big figure the biggest one uh, so far we only have is the Tyrannosaurus Rex but now uh, there are four medium-sized figures two carnivores two herbivores and I figured let's look at the herbivores first because uh, they actually look really cool so those two herbivores that we're gonna be looking at are we have from the first wave the Parasaurolophus from uh, the Lost World and then from the second wave we have the iconic Triceratops yeah, so uh, these were uh, released, mm, uh, the Parasaurolophus was released uh, more than a couple of months ago, probably around February, March, and the Triceratops uh, just recently hit shelves within the last month or so. So, um, very excited to look at them, especially because they're bigger, so there might be more articulation, more detail compared to the smaller figures, and uh, I want to see how it compares to the Tyrannosaurus Rex and see how they scale up and just how they look, because there's a big difference in price point. Uh, these are typically around twenty to twenty-four dollars, depending on where you go and where you pick them up. And uh, I know the T-Rex is actually shooting up in price a little bit. It looks like it got marked up by five bucks, so it's about fifty-four dollars. Where uh, if you get it from Target or maybe some other places. But uh, regardless, let's go ahead and open up those uh, dinosaurs and see what we have in store. Okay, so here we go, guys. We've got the Parasaurolophus and the Triceratops, both right here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and look at the Parasaurolophus first. So let's go ahead and see. So we got the box right here, uh, the Hammond Collection logo, the Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton, and then we got the Parasaurolophus, the name of the dinosaur right there. And you can see it in the window. It's got the same uh, like kind of amber looking uh, palm trees uh, that Jurassic is known for. Top of the box, same thing, emblem. Um, on the right side of the package, we see the Parasaurolophus, uh, the Lost World Jurassic Park logo, because that's where this dinosaur is from. And we got on the back right here, we got in this nice little running pose, so like when in, it is in the stampede. Uh, and we see right here, uh, yeah, that's the uh, the uh, the gatherers from InGen tracking it down and getting ready to uh, wrangle it up. So it says Parasaurolophus. The massive Parasaurolophus is captured by InGen on Isla Sorna, but not without a fight. And uh, bottom of the box just has all the uh, copyright info and things like that of that sort. There's the barcode. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I just has Hammond Collection, so let me go ahead and let's free this uh, beautiful dinosaur from its package. Alright, so here we go. Here's the Paris Ralph. It's something I did not expect is the tail to be off. But then again, looking at the box, um, it does not It does make sense for it to not be on there. So let's see. Before we do anything, let me take a look at the back. Uh, looks like we have... Uh, some shrink uh, some like plastic ties that are gonna be keeping the torso in uh, right here also at the crest and I think that's about it the tail looks like it should just come free just pop this up pull it out so let me go ahead and get this uh, quickly out of here oh actually it looks like there's some at the bottom too for its feet yeah we got some right here and this one it's very very thin you can barely see it so should have brought some scissors. Let me get let me get that taken care of. Now most people would probably use scissors to get this out, but me, um, if you're a little worried about scratching the paint or like scratching the figure, I like to use nail clippers just because it's easy to get underneath uh, the ties. So let me see. Go get it right, just right under here. Give it a little clip. Boom, and then that should be free. And then you only have to do one. So we'll go right up here. Bingo. Get those. <laughs> Get those out of there. Uh, let's see. The feet is where it's going to be a little harder. Let me see. Just got to get right under. Okay, there we go. And then the last one, it's like down right here. It's at a little bit of a weird angle. So this one you might need to do with the nail clippers or just probably do it from the front. But uh, like I said, if you're not worried about scratching the paint on these dinos, whoop. Just use some scissors. This one feels like rubber. Like it could be like a rubber band, but let's see if I can get in here from this angle. Come on. There we go. 
Okay, so that should be all four. So let me go ahead and, yeah, pull on this. Uh, let's see. We just moved the, the leg out. Yeah, that one gave way. Okay, so there we go. Uh, oh, there's one. Did I get the one by the back? Did I get this back foot right here? Yes, I did. Okay, yeah, so just pull that. There we go. Now that's free. And then last but not least, the the crest, which I think it already came free. Okay, so let's go ahead and there we go she's so she's free i'm going with this player suit right there and then like i said with the tail i'm going to go ahead and just push on the part right here and then pull up and boom there we go okay so let's go ahead and get this girl nice and set up uh, let's see. So, if we look at the hole right here. I'm just going to match it up with the tail. Uh, let's see. The tail feels really, really nice. Um, so what you're going to do is... What is this on here? I have something on here. It's like dust. What is this? Like a piece of... piece of lint. That was weird. Okay, so... See how it has this little, like, peg right there? And there's that peg right there. So, just line them up. Push really hard. Come on. You should hear a click. You kind of also want to match it with the design of the body. And then this is always... This is always right here. This is going to be at the bottom. So let me try that. That might be it. Wowie's hours. I cannot... Get this dinosaur tail in. That's a first. I've never had a problem with the tail. Okay, let me see. Let me try that one more time. Oh! Nope. It didn't go... I had it. It went in. There we go. There's the click. That's the click you want to hear. And then just rotate the tail. There we go. So you rotate it to match. And here we go. We got ourselves one Parasaurolophus. Okay, cool. So uh, just looking at the figure on its own, um, now that it's all set up, it looks really, really nice. I love it. Um, I've always been a fan of the Lost World Parasaurolophus. Um, it, it's, I mean, I guess because it has such a prominent role in the movie. Well, not prominent, but it's uh, where everybody remembers seeing it. The, the Paris Ralphus was in the original Jurassic Park, but it didn't have like a full-on appearance um, like it did in The Lost World. So this is cool. I'm really happy. I love the coloration. So let's take a look at the articulation. Uh, starting with the head, uh, we have a mouth right here, a little bill. So it can open up. Uh, you can open up pretty far again. Um, I'm doing like I did with the raptor and I'm breaking his mouth so you can open it pretty wide um, So just it's on a little hinge joint. Just Give it just a little bit of an open mouth closed mouth. So that's cool. Um, the head swivels on a ball joint um, It can look down it can look up a little bit So not too much movement on it, but right here at the neck. It's also on a ball joint so you can twist it 360 degrees and it can move further up. So when you want it to look up up when you want it to look just like that. If you want it to look down like it's eating, you can make it go even further down or just straight ahead like that. So that's cool. Uh, let's go ahead to the arms. The arms right here looks like the... It's on a swivel joint right here. Swivel to go in and out, um, but it also looks like it can rotate. Yep, go all the way around. So you can do some nice posability. Um, we've got a some articulation right here in the elbow. Looks like it's going to be... Just a little bit of motion, so you can move up, you can move further, you can move down. Um, ball, yeah, so it's on a ball joint as well, so you can swivel it around. Um, unfortunately, no articulation in the hands, so that's a bummer. But you can get into a, a good variety of poses by doing this, by, with the articulation that's given to us. Um, the body is a nice hard plastic, so no articulation there, it's just one piece. Uh, so let's go on to the legs. Uh, we can do, let's see, how far can these go? Round and round they go. Oh, look, I hear a click, but it looks like it still can go. Yeah, so you can go all the way around 360 at the hip. Um, I don't know if you want to. I heard, like I said, I heard that click, but it looks like the clicks are to keep it in place. So you can keep it, it, it locks right there. And then it also, where did it lock at? 
right there. I guess it locks it, it locks at the neutral position, but you can move it all the way around. And then we have some knee articulation right here. On ball joint, you can swivel at 360. And then you have right here at the second knee. I don't know what this part is called. And it uh, looks like this is also on an independent ball joint. So you can you can do some, some pretty crazy work with this thing. And then let's see the foot. Anything on the foot? No, the foot is stuck in place. So the only articulation you're going to get is from right here. And then the tail, like I said, you have to attach it separately. But it has a nice little rubbery feel. Not like the hard plastic. It's like... Kind of like, uh, like, it's like soft hard plastic. It's a little malleable, so you can actually bend the tail a little bit. It looks like it's got a wire in there, so that's cool. That'll make for some good fun. And, uh, yeah, there we go. That's our, that's the Parasaurolophus from The Lost World. Pretty nice. Uh, probably the best looking figure that we've gotten for a Parasaurolophus, in my opinion. But, uh, let's see. It looks like, can we make her stand up? Cool, you can make her stand up pretty well. Uh, you're going to have to fiddle around with the joints to get her to stay. Uh, let's see. Uh, there we go. Bingo. So you can get her to look high and mighty, or you can have her on all fours if you want. It's a cool thing about being a hadrosaur. You can be bipedal, or you can be quadrupedal. There we go. So let's go ahead and put our nice, awesome Parasaurolophus right over here for now. Okay, now let's move on to the Triceratops, the walking battle tank of, of the dinosaur world um not really a battle tank more like a freaking battering ram um as you can see we got the triceratops right here same packaging essentially as the parasaurolophus of course it's going to be uh the triceratops right here jurassic park logo because that's where it's from we have the dinosaur right here and then we have the little bio triceratops and the little picture is from the first movie where we got tim uh grant and ellie uh, looking at the sick Triceratops. Having fallen ill from eating West Indian lilac, the Triceratops, Dr. Alan Grant's favorite childhood dinosaur, makes an enormous mark on the Jurassic Park tour. So yeah, um, like I said, pretty much the same packaging as the Parasaurolophus, except it's tailored to the Triceratops. So let me go ahead and get her out of her box, and we'll take a look at her more in depth. Right, so here we go. Here is the Triceratops. So, like the Parasaurolophus, uh, the tail is detached. Uh, a lot smaller, though, than the Parasaurolophus tail, or at least it looks like it. And it looks like we do have some uh, some uh, wires or some saw, some fasteners in place to keep her uh, from falling out or being stolen. So, let's go ahead. And let's get that. Let's get that off. So, we have one here by the horns. Um, go ahead and just clip that away. Uh, we have up here at the top of the torso. Uh, there we go. That's gone. Uh, we've got that's the bottom one right there. Like I said, you only have to remove one uh, in order to get her free. So it looks like there's right here on the back legs. Uh, if I can get to it, I might have to do it from the front. Oh, wait. Hold on. Uh, come on. There we go. And then the last one should be right here at the front of the figure by the front legs. Uh, okay, come on. There we go. I think that should be it. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now that she's free, we're just going to grab her from the torso. And grab her from the frill. Oh, I guess this did not come out. So let me just... You can actually clip it right there in between the horns. So if you have scissors... Feel free to do so. Boom. There we go. So now she should be free. Grab her by the frill. And boom. Bingo. Okay. Let's put it right there. And then, of course, the tail. Uh, pretty much the same deal as the Parasaurolophus tail. Just going to go ahead and grab the tail from the fat end. Pull it out. Okay. And it looks like we got the same figure, uh, the same fastener deal going on here. So go ahead and look at your trike. Just line it up. And then hopefully... Wow. That was so much easier than... Then the Parasaurolophus. Uh, let's go ahead. I don't know where the... You can usually find out how the tail is supposed to go just by lining up the grooves of uh, what's already like set in place on the figure. And uh, there we go. Okay, so here's our Triceratops. Wow, this is really, really nice. 
Um, the articulation on it, <laughs> articulation, the details on it, the pebbling and the little bumps of the skin are just so nice. It's really, really cool. It adds like some nice flavor to it. Um, the horns, the horns look really, really great. Uh, it has that like bone and like weathering effect on them. Uh, let's see. So let's start with the head. Uh, we've got uh, no horn articulation, of course. Uh, but the horns look massive on this figure. It's really, really nice. You can see why it was uh, not to be messed with. Um, let's see. The mouth. Do we have articulation on the mouth? That's the big question. I don't remember seeing anything about it. Oh, no. No way. Oh, what a disappointment. The mouth doesn't open. Wow. Whoa, that seems like such a missed opportunity. Oh man, okay, um, well the mouth doesn't open unfortunately. I would have loved to have the beak open up, but it looks like, I can't believe Mattel dropped the ball on that, that's so disappointing. Because it looks like it can open, it's like you have the groove right here, The that's just like, it looks like it's ready to open its mouth, but no, no it, it can't. Okay, um, well the head is on a ball joint, and it looks like you can rotate it, I don't know why you would want to. But you can rotate it 360 degrees. So there we go. Um, the torso. This one this one's very, very heavy. I like it. Very, very big and bulky figure. Um, torso's one piece. Uh, going from the neck all the way to the tail. Uh, that you attach. And the tail. This one right here is hard plastic. But the tail right here is a little bit softer. You can move it around. So it's got like a segmented tail right there. Um, actually, I want to see... Hmm, I don't know which way this little tail is supposed to go. I guess you could just move it around till you find a a look that just better fits you or that's better suited to you. So let's see. Let's look at the hind legs. Uh, we've got ball joint that can move probably 360. It's going to be really hard to move at 360 unless you move the head out of the way. Let's see. Hmm. Doesn't look like it. It won't go all the way because the torso right here is in the way. As you can see, it's like there's a there's plenty of space right here for it to move back, but that's where you run into those problems. It's not going to go all the way through. And then uh, I guess as far forward, pretty much the same deal. You can only go about as right there, but uh, really no reason why you would want to go any further. So we've got the elbow right here, elbow joint, which can go up and down, and it's on a ball joint, so you can twist it 360. And then the feet as well. Let's see. It looks like, yeah, they have some movement. You can move them up, have them pointed forward, and then you can have them pointed down, just like that. So you can probably get some really cool, like, running and charging positions uh, with this figure. And uh, it looks like the foot itself is, is it separate from the, from the elbow? I think it is. Yeah, there it goes. You can rotate it. So that's the front leg. That's the hind leg, so you can do that. Uh... The hind leg. No, yeah, that is no the, the the front legs. These are the rear legs. <laughs> yeah, oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, uh, so then the hind the the back legs can go pretty far back. That's as far as it goes until it gives me a lot of resistance. So it's not meant to go any further, and uh, you can kind of see why. It starts to rub against the figure right there, um, and then you have this nice big old groove, so you can have your legs go all the way up until there, and that's as far as it goes. Looks like you can actually have them. Yeah, there is some some movement. You can swing them, swivel them in and out. So that's kind of cool. You can have a nice little wide stance where it's ready to stand its ground against a hungry predator. Uh, we've got the knee right here. So we got you can bend it, bend it back. That's as far back as it goes. Uh, you can bend it forward, bend it pretty far forward. Give it like a little jumping look. Um, and it's also on a ball joint, so you can swivel it. And then the foot, just like the front feet, can also move forward and back. And they can rotate on the ball joint on the ankle. And that's pretty much it. That's the Triceratops right there. Not too much to work with. But with a figure like this that, <laughs> honestly, what is the Triceratops going to do? You're, you're, not, um, you're not missing much, missing out on much. So I'm going to go and get her nice and set up. Let me see what I can do here. Bingo. So there it is. There's our trike. 
Um, not too much you can do with it. Like I said, the legs are pretty maneuverable, but there's only so much uh, you can do. You can get it nice and nice and high off the ground. Uh, let's see. There we go. If <laughs> you can stretch its arms out very high, but if you do that, it's like back legs, as you can see, are kind of floating off the ground. There's <laughs> there's all this room underneath. Um, but yeah, that's that's our trike, and then uh, let's do a size comparison with our Parasaurolophus. So they're about the same size, um, just different different dimensions. Um, so it's kind of cool. I like it. Um, personally, I think I don't know which one I like more. Uh, they're both really cool. Um, I do like the pebbling and the skin more on the Triceratops. It just has so much more detail compared to the Parasaurolophus. If you look at it, you can tell this one is probably like one of the first figures they worked on. So kind of makes sense. Let me go ahead and just grab the other figures that we have and do a quick size comparison. All right, there we go. So we have all the figures that we currently have, uh, well, that I currently have and I have opened uh, to for, for size comparison. Um, we have Ian Malcolm, the Velociraptor, and then we have the Parasaurolophus and the Triceratops. It looks like they are pretty in scale with the, uh, uh, with the human figures. And let's see, let me get the Triceratops a little bit closer. And you can see, yeah, the, the Triceratops does look absolutely big compared to the human figure. So if you're looking for uh, some figures to uh, recreate some of your favorite movie scenes, the Hammond Collection is where you want to start looking because uh, these are just, they're, they're really great. Uh, the detail is amazing. Um, the price is pretty nice. And of course, in the back, we have the Tyrannosaurus Rex just dwarfing all the other dinosaurs and figures. Um, it's really, really the centerpiece of this whole this whole collection so um definitely pick that one up if you can but uh yeah here we go this is nice i love it um i can't wait to get a nice open flat area so i can uh display all my figures um i have another parasaurolophus another triceratops uh, i've got three raptors i've got a couple other figures that i haven't shown off yet but we'll be doing that soon but here we go. There we go. That's that's the Triceratops and the Parasaurolophus added to our Hammond collection. So, what did you guys think? I just shook the whole camera. <laughs> what do you guys think of it? Uh, do you prefer the Triceratops more or do you like the Parasaurolophus better? Um, which is your favorite figure that you currently have in the Hammond collection? Let me know in the comments down below. And be sure to leave a like if you like this video. Comment uh, what figure you want me to see open next. Uh, currently, I have the Baryonyx. The Ceratosaurus, Dr. Alan Grant, and the Gallimimus left. I have four figures that remained unopened on this box, or unopened and um, unfilmed for the channel. So if you want to tell me what two pair of figures you want to see next, leave that down in the comments below and we'll get to that. Uh, we have two figures uh, on the way uh, that have yet to be released. We have Dr. Ellie Sattler and the Dilophosaurus. Uh, so those should be coming out uh, later this month um, or early next month. So I can't wait to get into that. And then we'll be all cut up with the Hammond Collection. So I can't wait to see what's coming down the pipeline from Mattel. They're doing a great job with this. There are some quality assurance issues, uh, quality control issues, um, excuse me, uh, for some of the figures. I know the T-Rex, uh, a lot of people are having some problems with the feet and the leg joints and uh, the hip right here, or the, the torso. But um, so far, mine has been pretty nice. And uh, remember, if you wanna be alerted when we have those videos going up, make sure you subscribe. Ring the bell so you're notified. Until then, take care, guys. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!